Now we talked about strategies, and I want to talk about a few strategies that tend to work. I mentioned these earlier. The first strategy is the strategy that we might call the best. Be the best. And the basic approach here is the highest quality, a flawless experience, high status, conspicuous consumption, pride of spending, all of those kinds of things. Image. But you are the gold standard. And there are many examples of successes here. Companies like Rolex and Apple Computer and Ferrari and Four Seasons Hotels and Whole Foods Market and Virgin Atlantic. These are the gold standards that made it and they're very powerful and they are very, very valuable brands, very valuable companies. Now, the general pros to this approach are that you get to use premium pricing. You get to price your products and services essentially wherever you want, whatever you can get for them. And this leads to potentially very high profits. Because when you're the best, you kind of have that whole segment to yourself and people will tend to pay a lot more. Now the cons to this are that perfection is expected. When you're the best, people expect everything to be perfect. And you're on some level competing with the experience that those other brands that I just mentioned deliver. All right? It's also expensive to deliver the gold standard in many cases. It's expensive to deliver a premium experience. And when you're successful, you attract attention immediately and others say, that looks like a niche that I want to get into. And so you attract your own competition. Now here are some of the pros that I see for a new high growth startup business. When you go for the strategy of we are the best, you can become very visible to the highest spending customers quickly. And you can, if you're strong and swift, you could corner the market. The cons though that I see are that it's typically very expensive to storm the market and create the best in a category where there are already well-funded competitors. Okay? So when I'm talking about this strategy of being the best, I'm talking about entering into a marketplace where there are already competitors and you are now going to come be the best. Um, it also can require large amounts of money up front and probably well-funded competitors, the big competition already is thinking about that market if they're, already, if they're not already in that market. Now the next strategy that we'll talk about is kind of the other, other end of the spectrum. And this strategy is the cheapest or the best value. And this basic approach is lowest cost, best value. And examples of companies that have done very well with this are companies like Walmart, Southwest Airlines, Home Depot, Staples, McDonald's, Dell. These are low cost competitors that just dominate their markets. They do very well. So a general plus or one of the pros of this strategy is that if you can achieve high volume and you really can dominate the market, the volume can make huge amounts of money. I mean, modern successes like Walmart that have become some of the most powerful companies in the world have proven that by exploiting efficiencies, becoming using or exploiting technology to exploit efficiencies and just being better, faster, more on top of their game, they can make huge profits. But there are downsides, there are cons, there are dangers. One of these is that it's a tricky game. If you compete on price, and someone shows up and they can do it at a better price, your margin is probably pretty thin and it's going to be hard to compete with them. Uh, an example is China right now. China is actually wiping out entire sectors of industry where we, in our Western culture, used to be strong. When I heard that we are now importing steel from China to our country, I quickly I did the math and I said, okay, wait. So 
they're taking steel in whatever form it comes in bars or sheets or I don't know how you ship steel. They're bringing it all the way down to the water. They're loading it up onto a ship and then they're using the fuel to get it all the way around the world, unloading it, and they can do that cheaper than we can make it at wherever the dock is? That's unbelievable. Mm. So when you compete on price, you can get beaten on price, and then it can wipe you out. A lot of industries uh, have paid a high price for competing on price. Now for uh, a new business, there are actually some benefits. One of the benefits, or one of the pros to this strategy, is that it's a no-brainer. You just start and say, we are the lowest cost place you can go. We got the cheapest prices. And you can yell that from the treetops, and you will attract people. People will come in because they want to buy the thing at the best price. Okay. The other thing that makes it uh, simple and easy is it's easy for your company and your team. You just tell everyone, we have to have the lowest price. That's how we stay in business. We got to figure that one out. So it can keep you aligned, of course. Now, the cons for a new business are that big companies that want to own that market and don't want you to take any of it from them, that are doing a hundred or a thousand times the business that you're doing, they can tweak the market a little bit or change the prices and make it so that it's very painful for you. Okay? There are laws against these kind of things, but I think we've all seen that when it comes to uh, a market that's very valuable, other businesses and people are willing to do things that aren't always um, their highest ethical selves, let's just say. And when you're the little guy and you're trying to compete on price, it can be very hard. Which leads me to our third strategy. And this strategy I'll call the new unique solution, or the new category. And the basic approach here is that you're going to create this new category, not out here in reality, but in the mind of the prospect. You're going to become a new niche expert. You're going to create the niche, and then you're going to be the expert in it. And this is the land of essentially zero competition. And this is also the land where you can set your own prices. Because when you're the only one offering this service, as far as the prospect is concerned, then they need to pay what is reasonable to pay. And if you can persuade them that you have the value, then you can persuade them that it's worth paying whatever you want them to pay. Now, some of the pros to this strategy are that if it's a hit, you can then parlay this and develop it into the best strategy because you created the category. So you can then kind of morph or evolve or transform into the owner of the top of the market. So some examples of companies, products that have done this are things like the iPod or Jamba Juice or MySpace or even Google to a large extent or this program, Altitude. Now you might ask, well, wait a minute, you know, Google didn't create the search engine category. In the minds of all the people that use it, they did. If you ask the average person who invented the search engine, what do you think most of them are going to say? Google. Most people have never been into a funky little hole in the wall, healthy, natural juice restaurant or little juice place, but they have been to a Jamba Juice, and they think that Jamba Juice invented it. Do you think that Apple invented the MP3 player, or the portable music player, or the portable video player with the iPod? No. Do you think that most people that own them think that they did? Yes. Why? Because they created a new category in the mind of the prospect. Right? It was the new, unique solution. Now one of the challenges here when you're doing this is that it actually requires work. It requires you to spend some time getting to know your customers, finding out where they have a pain, a problem, a frustration, 
a result that they want to achieve, but they don't feel like they have any options. And then you can address that with a new niche that you can create. A great advantage, by the way, for new small businesses or fast-growing businesses is that this strategy allows you to, quote-unquote, compete with big, well-funded players. It allows you to jump in, charge premium prices, and create your own category. And in a lot of cases, the competitors don't even really know what you're doing. They don't understand. They, they can't see that you've created a new category. They just lump you in with everything else. They don't realize that, as far as the customers are concerned, the customers are getting something new, different, and better. Now, the downside of this, by the way, and everything has pros and cons, is that it requires a little bit of thinking, a little bit of legwork, and a little bit of experimentation. If you're creating something new, by definition, that means you're blazing your own trail. You're finding a new path that no one has taken. You're not walking up in the park to the trailhead and walking down the trail that a thousand humans and a lot of animals have taken for hundreds of years. You've got to find your own way, but a lot of rewards can come from it. 